сидеть. Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 13536 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revision to the business programme for this week. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 13536. Formally moved. Thank you. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 13536, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question 1, Liam MacArthur. Presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to figures suggesting that there are no head or deputy head, uh, head teachers from black or minority ethnic backgrounds. Minister, Alistair Allen. Presiding officer, this government is committed to equality. We want to see a diverse education workforce which reflects Scottish society. Statistics indicate that around 2% of the teaching workforce and around 1% of individuals in promoted posts are from a black or minority ethnic background. As employers, it is the responsibility of local authorities to ensure that their recruitment practices are fair and inclusive, and the Scottish Government is committed to work with local authorities on this matter. Liam MacArthur. Can I thank the Minister for that response? The Scottish Government's comment last week was that it was ensuring that the Master's qualification for headship due in 2018-19 is fully impact assessed. I think the Minister would agree that that um, is not good enough. The Government is rightly, I think, proud of its record on the number of women holding Cabinet position and on its work generally in relation to gender equality. Does the Minister not agree that it's time to widen the Government's uh, equalities work to give greater opportunity to those from BAME backgrounds? And if so, what specific further steps does the Scottish Government propose to take to remove barriers for those from BME backgrounds to reaching the top of the teaching profession? Minister. Well, the member is, of course, right to, to point to the fact that we need to promote uh, equalities and diversity in all aspects of the teaching profession. And the new master's qualification that he uh, refers to, the master's qualification for headship, which will be mandatory from 2018-19, will be fully equality uh, impact assessed by the Scottish College for Educational Leadership so that it's fair and accessible for all. Uh, and we have, as the member alluded to, put some effort into ensuring that uh, there is more of a balance uh, between the genders, particularly in primary school, uh, in the future, and encouraging uh, men to come forward for the teaching profession. Uh, we, we equally need to, uh, and the member is right to point it, ensure uh, that our teaching workforce is reflective of and representative of Scotland's population as a whole. And uh, there are one or two points I could, I could point to uh, in the statistics that are referred to in the question. But uh, I think it suffice to say that we all of us uh, want to improve the, the situation and make it clear that people from all uh, ethnic minority backgrounds are welcome in the teaching profession uh, and are equally likely to be promoted. Liam. Minister, for that uh, further response. I mean, teaching unions have also raised concerns about the overall number of teachers from black and minority ethnic uh, backgrounds in the, in the profession. In order to establish a, a, a ways of, of progressing this and making the, uh, the, the progress that he's alluded to, has the Scottish Government undertaken any analytical work on the reasons for the lack of diversity in our schools' workforce, and particularly amongst those in senior management positions within schools, uh, that might inform future decisions about how to remove those obstacles? Minister. Well, I, I'm uh, very willing to, to work with Education Scotland and others to establish some of the reasons. There are uh, anecdotally, of course, many possible reasons for this. The, uh, it may be that, for instance, other professions, other uh, parts of our, our public life uh, are, for whatever reason, uh, uh, more diverse, more representative than the teaching profession. It may be to do with uh, the, uh, the, um, the progression of, of teachers uh, within uh, their careers. Um, I think in terms of the figures themselves, though, it's worth saying that the, the data is slightly complex and is capable of being interpreted in a couple of different ways. I say that not to get away from the, the member's central point. But, for instance, there are uh, some people who would define themselves as minority ethnic uh, who would fall within the white other category. Um, and across all sectors, uh, publicly funded, that is, the number of individuals in promoted posts 
uh, principal teacher, deputy head, head teacher, who fall within non-white ethnic groups is 102. Uh, I say none of that to take away from the central point, which is that we should, of course, be encouraging much more diversity uh, within our schools. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. I, I would think that one of the first steps in increasing the number of black and minority ethnic um, members from that community who, who hold senior management posts in schools would, put, would be to increase the pool of available candidates in the general teaching workforce. And just ask the Minister whether he's had any discussions with the Scottish Funding Council or teacher training institutions as to the intake um, and their percentages um, of students from black and minority ethnic backgrounds. Minister. Well, well, notwithstanding the, the point that the member makes, uh, obviously the government is not in a position to dictate um, uh, to General Teaching Council, which is an independent body or others, uh, around some of these questions. Uh, we don't operate the system uh, of quotas, obviously. Um, but we do, I think, need to get to the bottom of, of why the teaching profession may not be as attractive to people from black and ethnic minority uh, backgrounds as perhaps other professions are. We do need to work with both the General Teaching Council for Scotland and indeed also uh, the universities who are providing the initial teacher education uh, to examine these issues, and that's something I would intend to do. Question number two, David Stewart. Thank you. Officer, to ask the Scottish Government how it is responding to the concerns of the CalMAC workforce who have been recently been balloted for strike action. Minister Derek Mackay. CalMAC's ferry services play a crucial role in the daily lives of our island communities and the Scottish Government has made clear its commitment to the continued delivery of a safe and reliable ferry network. We want to protect CalMAC employees by ensuring a fair, affordable and sustainable pension scheme is written into the next ferry service operating contract. I encourage CalMAC and the unions to continue with the current process of engagement on proposed changes to the pension scheme and to work together towards an outcome that avoids the need for industrial action. I have had two constructive meetings with the CalMAC unions and the STUC in recent weeks and have offered to continue that dialogue. David Stewart. Uh, President Officer, the Minister will be well aware that over 90 per cent of RMT members in CalMAC voted for industrial action as they have genuine and heartfelt concerns over job security conditions and particularly pensions. The Scottish Government owns CalMAC. What specific actions is the Minister going to carry out to resolve this very unsatisfactory and worryingly poor climate of industrial relations? Minister. Well, I can advise the Member that we will ensure that the processes that we are responsible for are carried out competently. And I would say again that we want to give the assurance to employees that we continue to support the services by investing in them and we will conduct a procurement exercise that is in keeping with the legislation, the same legislation that the previous uh, Labour administration would have to have uh, complied with to come at an outcome in terms of the procurement of services and our guarantees around the, the pension as well. To put the issue into context, we are aware that there is an identified deficit which is up to now £59 million in terms of the revaluation of the pension. And the trade unions aren't resisting reform and very mindful about what their issues are. And that's why dialogue, continued meetings in a constructive and positive uh, fashion uh, is necessary and is right. And I'll do everything I can as Minister uh, to support those uh, discussions. But our, our support for this uh, public service is absolutely resolute. David Stewart. Uh, President officer, does the Minister share the views of the RMT General Secretary who said, and I quote, RMT members in Calmac feel they are caught in the crossfire of unnecessary and damaging tendering battle that leaves jobs, conditions and pensions hanging by a thread? Surely the Scottish Government has learnt the lessons of the fiasco of the Northern Isles contract award when Serco axed a crossing and sacked staff. Minister. I certainly do understand why employees would feel nervous when their jobs are subject to a procurement exercise, the same procurement exercise, of course, that the Labour administration would have been undertaking as well, one that we cannot escape in terms of legislation. That's why we set very robust specification around the services that we want. We are investing in the ferry network with new vessel uh, provision as well. And we will support employees through this process. And can I be clear in terms of what 
uh, is being uh, procured, regardless of the ownership status of the successful bidder, these ferry services aren't being privatised. What is being tendered is a public service contract to operate lifeline services on behalf of Scottish ministers. The operator will have to comply with the service specification defined by Scottish ministers and, as now, will be subject to stringent contract management conditions. All of the vessels and ports currently in public ownership will remain in public ownership and, together with Clyde and Hebrides, services remain under public control by Scottish ministers throughout uh, the contract. So this isn't privatisation as some elements of the uh, Labour Party are suggesting, and much to the regret of the Conservatives, if I can hear to my uh, right, both politically and uh, literally. But we will protect our public services and conduct this procurement exercise in keeping with European uh, and all necessary legislation and arrive at the right decision in which we protect the lifeline services and also support employees through what I do respect as a difficult process. Alex Johnson. Thank you very much. Can I ask the Minister if he will give a guarantee that in reacting to the action of the trade unions in relation to CalMAC, he will also put as his highest priority through this tendering process value for money for the taxpayer and a quality service for the fair paying passenger? Minister. Well, of course, these issues uh, are about balance. It is a matter of fact that there was a deficit in the pension fund previously and Scottish Government has been supporting that. Now, we will, of course, look at the uh, assessments and the revaluation once again and, through the employers' uh, dialogue with the trade unions, continue that discussion. But we will do it in a culture of positivity, a constructive approach in which we encourage CalMAC and the unions to talk and to work together so that we can all avoid any industrial action. And I'm sure that that uh, climate will read, uh, lead to a positive outcome, as I say, in keeping with all the necessary considerations. Neil Findlay. So, Minister, let me get this right. A service currently run by the public sector may be run by the private sector, and that's not privatisation. Um, the reality is that the Northern Ferries have gone to Serco, the Sleeper has gone to Serco, ScotRail has gone to the Dutch company Abellio. Is it any wonder that the RMT and their members have no confidence in the Minister's handling of what's going on at the moment? Minister? Well, I mean, I have to say to, to Neil Finlay, I recall what privatisation looks like as delivered by the Tory government, and it is ripping apart of public services and leaving it to the private sector. That is not what is being proposed. We are talking about public services. We are talking about the provision of services as specified by ministers, and they will remain in the ownership uh, and direction uh, of Scottish ministers. But Neil Finlay, as it's unexpected, or I should say not uh, unexpected, uses the intemperate language. I think you would do well not to try and stoke up uh, grievance and try and create a toxic situation for the employees. We should be looking after the employees uh, of CalMAC Finlay, and working Heckling. in partnership with the trade unions to arrive at a positive outcome so that we can continue to provide those public services in the interests of the communities which they serve. And we will continue to do so in keeping with the law. Does Neil Finlay suggest that we should break the law? Does he think that that would leave us in a satisfactory position? No, it would lead to challenge and the people who would suffer would be the communities and the staff who would suffer if we didn't deliver this procurement exercise in keeping with the necessary procurement legislation. That ends topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Paul Wheelhouse on the Scottish Government report on the operation of the offensive behaviour at football and threatening communications.